let us discuss today some problems or numericals that you may encounter in your exam okay so let's come to question number one these problems are related to the solvay stassen's algorithm okay so coming to question number one suppose you are given n value as 13 and a is given as 2 okay suppose a is not given it is preferable to take the value of a as 2 since we already know that n is going to be an odd integer so a positive odd integer so definitely if you take the value of a as 2 then the gcd of a and n will always be equal to 1 so now coming to the question now we are given n as, the value of n as 13 and the value of a as 2 so we need to test if n is composite or not using solvay stassen's algorithm here is our answer according to the algorithm in the first step we consider the value of a if not given since the value of a is already given we write given a is equal to 2 coming to step 2 we take the value of x as a upon n so the value of x in this case would be a is 2 and n that we are given is 13 so a upon n will be 2 upon 13 coming to the first part of step 2 since gcd of 2 comma 13 is 1 that is the only common integer that divides both 2 and 13 is 1 therefore we can conclude that x is not equal to 0 correct and second part of our step 2 is basically y can be written as a raised to n minus 1 upon 2 into mod n multiplied by mod n so y is equal to a is 2 raised to 13 minus 1 upon 2 this is our power n minus 1 upon 2 multiplied by modulo n that is modulo 13 this is our rhs and the value of x would be nothing but our lhs that is 2 upon 13 in step 3 that is in this step now what we need to do is we need to check the value of whether this value this condition is satisfied that is x is congruent to y mod n now we check this so we first solve the left hand side solving the left hand side if we take we are given x is equal to a upon n is equal to 2 upon 13 our trick over here was like according to the properties that we had studied before the trick that we use for this case is that suppose we are given the value as 2 upon n then we first divide n by 8 same thing we are doing over here we divide n is 13 by 8 if you multiply 8 into 1 you get 8 ones are 8 and the remainder that you get in this case is 5 but we are searching for remainders either plus minus 1 or plus minus 3 so 5 is of no use to us so we ignore this but just if we modify this a bit instead of 1 if we take 2 so we get 8 multiplied by 2 is 16 and 16 minus 13 you get remainder as minus 3 and minus 3 is of use to us if you can see over here if we get 13 con n is congruent to plus minus 3 we have got minus 3 mod 8 so we can write this as this the condition that we have obtained over here we can write it as 13 is congruent to minus 3 mod 8 and it is of this form n is congruent to minus 3 mod 8 then we can write the fraction that we were looking before that is the legendary number can be given the value of minus 1 so the legendary number 2 upon 13 it may not be legendary number but uh, we are assuming it to be prime since we are doing the primality testing we are assuming the value of n to be prime and hence we are using the properties of legendary symbols so 2 upon 13 the value we get on lhs is minus 1 over here coming to the rhs now in rhs what we do is we take a raised to n minus 1 upon 2 mod n so 
a raised to n minus 1 upon 2 n was 13 13 minus 1 would be 12 by 2 that is 6 and 2 raised to 6 mod 13 the value of 2 raised to 6 is 64 and if you calculate the value for mod you get since the 13 into 5 is 65 and 65 is one more than this then remainder that you get on 60 subtracting 64 minus 65 you will get the remainder as minus 1. So you are getting RHS over here as minus 1, which is same, if you check, it is same as the LHS that we had obtained before. And hence, we can conclude using solve Tyson's algorithm, since x, uh, we can conclude that LHS is, e is congruent to, is, is equal to RHS. So x, LHS was x and RHS was y mod n. Is, x is congruent to y mod n. N by therefore by the solve Tyson's algorithm we can say 13 is a prime number and coming to our problem number two so this is our problem number two suppose a n has a bigger value before we had taken n as 13 and which is a smaller value we know by default 13 is prime but for bigger values like 341 to find out whether this number is prime or not, we do the primality testing. Primality testing. Okay, so n is equal to 341, a is equal to 2. Now, answer for this question would be if we take step 1 as a is equal to 2, given it's given in the question, so we don't need to assume the value. If it was not given, then it is easiest to assume a as 2. Coming to step 2, x is taken as a upon n, x is equal to in this case the value of a that is given to us is 2 the value of n that is given to us is 341 that is 341 so we write 2 upon 341 as the value of x this is our LHS that we have obtained now coming to the first part of the step 2 that is gcd of 2 comma 341 is equal to 1 and since there is no factors in common except 1, so therefore G GCD of these two numbers is 1, implies x is not equal to 0. So we have checked our first condition. We proceed with the further conditions. Second part of the step 2 will become that y, you can give, you can associate, assign the value a raised to n minus 1 upon 2, a raised to n minus 1 upon 2 multiplied by modulo of n. So y will get the value 2 raised to n was 341 minus 1 upon 2 and multiplied by mod of 341 and this 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 value that we obtained is r this is the rhs correct and coming to step 3 step 3 is finally to check this solve essence algorithm condition that is if x is congruent to y mod n or not now we solve the lhs first that is the value for x x we had got as 2 upon 341 same way since it is of the form 2 upon n as i told this property is very uh, very important it comes very often so we use the same property and we get the value as we have to basically divide n by 8 same thing we are doing over here n over here is 341 so dividing n by 8 we get 8 multiplied by 42 would give us 336 and remainder that you're getting on subtracting these two numbers is 5. 5 is of again no use since we need plus minus 1 or plus minus 3. So we ignore this. It is of no use. Just take one number ahead of this. So we were getting a positive number over here. Maybe you may not get a plus 1 or plus 3. You may get a minus 1 or minus 3. To check that, you take one number ahead. Instead of 42, you take 43, the next number. Now checking the next number. 8 into 43 you will get the value as 344 if you subtract these two numbers the answer will be a negative number that is negative 3 and negative 3 is of very much use to us as n is congruent to plus minus 3 and since they are congruent what we do over here is minus 1 if n is congruent to the, the value of this fraction would become the of the legendary symbol would become minus 1 since we are in this form that is 341 n is congruent to minus 3 mod 8 now what we do is we substitute the entire value of the legend decimal as minus 1 
as minus 1 over here. Suppose we would have got plus or minus 1 over here instead of 3, then we would have substituted this value as 1. And this is how we solved our LHS. Considering further with RHS. So for RHS, we had the value a raised to n minus 1 upon 2 into modulo of n. So 2 was our a raised to 341 minus 2, uh, 341 minus 1 upon 2. This would give us the value 170. And one 2 raised to 170 mod 341. This is the value. Now 2 raised to 170 again is a large number. So 170 we can split into 128 plus 32 plus 8 plus 2. And you can write it as 2 raised to 170 can be written as 2 raised to 128 plus 2 raised to 2 raised to 128 plus 32 plus 8 plus 2. So basically 2 raised to 128 into 2 raised to 32 into 2 raised to 8 into 2 raised to 2. So this is how you can split it up. So 1, 170 can be split up into these small numbers. That's what we have. Now we'll calculate only these smaller values, the value for these smaller values. And we wrote that over here 2 raised to 4, 2 raised, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 4, 2 raised to 8, 2 raised to 16, 2 raised to 32, 64, and 128. And we, we find its modulus with respect to 341. So 4 mod 341 is 4. 2 raised to 4 would be basically 4 square mod 341. And you'll get the value as 16. 2 raised to 8 mod 341 would be 16 square mod 341 which on calculating you will get the value as 256 2 raised to 16 mod 341 would be 256 square mod 341 which is equal to 64 and then you get the value as 2 raised to 32 mod 341 okay that is 64 the previous value 64 square mod 341 which is 4 now since you've got the value as 4 again just repeat the values because it is obviously the previous square you're doing over here so 4 then again 16 and 256 what the values of our concern are 128 32 8 and 2 so values corresponding to 128 32 8 and 2 we circle and since they are still very large numbers, if we multiply 256 into 256 into 4, into 4, it will be very large. So what the trick over here is you divide it into pairs of 2. So 4 multiplied by 256 mod 341, you'll get the answer as 1. 4 multiplied by 2, same thing. So again, answer will be 1. So basically 1 into 1 mod 341, you'll get the answer for RHS as 1 only. So you're getting RHS as 1, but LHS that we were getting before, so LHS that we were getting before was not 1, it was minus 1. So there is a difference over here. LHS and RHS are not equal. Hence, X is not congruent to Y mod N. Okay, So we can conclude X is not congruent to Y mod N. So the condition is not satisfied. This, therefore, this implies that 341 is a composite number or n that we took is a composite number using solve with an algorithm correct and going to our last and final problem that we'll take into consideration for n is equal to 287 and a is equal to 10 these are the values that are given to us suppose that these two are the values given to us now you see a is not 2 anymore so now this problem is a bit trickier since it is not just 2, it's not the basic value. So you take answer will be step 1 given a is 10. Step 2, what you do is write it as a upon. These steps remain same. We'll proceed a bit faster now. Since x is given as a upon, x is given as a upon n. So x is equal to the value of a is 10, value of n is 287. So x is equal to a upon n that is 10 upon 287 that is what we get and one thing that you should note over here is since 10 has the factors 2 and 5 and none of it uh, is divisible by 287 you can you can directly say that gcd 
of tenant 287 is equal to 1. Therefore, x that we have to check whether it is 0 or not, we can conclude it is not equal to 0 since GCD is 1. The only factor that they have in common is 1. So, why, why you have a raised to n minus 1 by 2 into modulo of n, that is a value is 10, 287 minus 1 by 2, same steps, and you get LHS is this, RHS expression is this. Now we have to check if both are equal or not. Okay. So, safe notation, we have to check whether it is equal or not. LHS is equal to x is equal to 10 upon 287. Now, 10 can be split up into this. How? I'll tell you. Uh, this is one of the properties that we have discussed before. So, if you remember, now 10, 10 basically I can write as 2 multiplied by 5. So, m1 into m2, where m1 is 2, m2 is 5, n is our 287. Now, if if the legendary symbol is of the form m1 into m2 upon n, we can write it as m1 upon n into m2 upon n. Okay, this is the split up that we get according to properties of legendary symbol. Now, once we've got this split up, we write the same thing 2 into 5 upon 287 can be written as 2 upon 287 multiplied by 5 upon 287. This does not mean 287 square. This is just a property of legendary symbols. Okay, we solve this separately. Okay, so 2 upon 287 can be solved easily upon using this 2 upon n. Uh, methodology that we the property that we used before that is dividing n by 8 so when we divide n by 8 287 divided by 8 we multiply 8 with 36 we get value as 288 subtracting both we get remainder as minus 1 so basically we get 287 is congruent to minus 1 mod 8 so 2 upon 287 would be equal to 1 using this since we have got this we are in we are we have obtained this expression n is congruent to minus 1 mod 8 so we get the value of the fraction as 1 okay and that's how we solve this part now to solve this part since we've always been solving till now we have been solving this part we now concentrate upon 5 upon 287 now this is no more in this property for solving this we require our last and final property that we had discussed that is this of the form m upon n where m is not 2 okay so if m is not 2 then we use this now in this case m is 5 and both m and n are positive odd integers both 5 and 287 are positive odd integers in this case what we do is we take a mod with 4 that is n divided by 4 we check the remainder whether it is 3 or not so we are dividing 287 by 4 okay both m and n both m and n both the uh, numbers 5 and 287 you have to divide by 4 and check for both you should get remainder as 3 as you see on dividing 287 by 4 you are getting the remainder as 3 but on dividing 5 by 4 you are getting the remainder as 1 so both these are not equal we can write this also we can also write this as 287 is congruent to 3 mod 4 and 5 is congruent to 1 mod 4 so since both are not equal there will be no change that is no change in sign so m by n we can write it as it we come under this category since both are not three we come under otherwise we write it as m by n we write it as n by m so we write 5 by 287 as 287 by 5 okay so that's what that's what we wrote and you see we had got the value 1 over here and 287 by 5 over here. So 1 into 287 by 5 can also be written as 2 upon 5. Why 2 upon 5? Because again, 5, 285 would be a multiple of 5. If you subtract uh, 287 minus 285, you'll get the remainder as 2. It could have, it cannot be solved further since 2 is not a, uh, this one, residue of 5. So which we have discussed before so it is not a quadratic residue of 5 according to the conditions that we had discussed before now that you can solve and check so hence we conclude that in the second part we can we can 
start solving will be RHS. RHS is basically same, similar way of solving. A, A raised to n minus 1 by 2, 10 raised to 287 minus 1 by 2 into modulo 287. That is n, value of n. You will get 10 raised to 143. 143 can be split up like this. And again, you can check the values 10, 10 square, 10, 4, 10, 8, 10, 16, 10 raised to 32, 64. 120 basically powers of 2 you are raising it to 10 okay and you check the modulo values corresponding to it and our concern is only 1 2 4 8 7 so 1 2 4 8 and 7 these values we take modulo since these are big numbers you can group them and find the modulo first and then multiply it so we get for this 92 if you group 16 and 16 modulo 287 you will get value as 256 and if you multiply 256 with 92 and then you multiply with 10 this entire expression on taking a modulo 287 would give you the value as 180 180 to 180 is nowhere close to 2 by 5 that we obtained in lhs hence we can say conclude that lhs is not equal to rhs hence 287 is a composite number using solve this Stasen's algorithm. Since the condition is not satisfied, hence 287 is a composite number. And that's all for this lecture. Thank you.